Good morning, everybody. How are you today? My name is Stephanie Anya. I'm an artist here in Concord, California. And this two-part video series will show you how to make this canvas. To be a star, life is about creating yourself. Um, it's a long process. Each video, like I said, it's a two-part series. Each video is about an hour. And, um, the reason for it being so long is because it took a long time to make the, the canvas. And I want you to see the whole process. Um, picking out images, making mistakes, correcting mistakes, and working through it. And creating something that I love in the end. And that's what's important, that you love what you've created. Well, yet I haven't had a full cup of coffee. So um, this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Just a quick word on the images. These images are laser jet prints that um, I was lucky enough to be able to manipulate, um, run through a couple times, and I am fortunate enough to have some very cool images that I want to work with on my next canvas. And that's the canvas that I'm going to make for you. I show you how to create a wonderful, beautiful setting for this. And this will most likely have some sort of words like, you know, I mean, you're a star. Obviously, she's some sort of star. And it's cute and cool, and I think it'll work well. Not quite as colorful as these images. These images just screamed happy, happy beach scene. So. Sorry, ding, I drink a coffee, a gulp, a huge gulp of coffee, because I need it. Okay, so I'm setting those aside, and let's go through what you will need. This is a cheap canvas from Michael's. Um, I get it in the bulk pack. You can find them on sale, generally $12.99 for this size for for 10 of them. Can't really beat that. I know Hobby Lobby has them also. Cheap canvas. You need some sort of underpants. You need an image that you want to work with. And you can choose any image. I have lots of images. Um, you know, it doesn't have to have anything special on it. It can just be a regular cool old you know, vintage, I use a lot of vintage photos. That's kind of my deal. Um, dictionary for underpants. So this is a dictionary that I have just gone through and stamped and stamped and stamped. Yes, I do sit here and go like this. And that's how um, I get the stamping on here. I have these already completed. These have a little bit. Mm, must be the black ink. This was black stays on ink. Use stays on. Use a permanent ink archival. Um, definitely preferred. Oh, I love that page. I'm going to use that on this canvas. And my little bunnies. It's just stamps. Just stamps on dictionary pages. Why do I put the stamps on the dictionary pages? Because mm, it gives more interest instead of just being the blah. Blah. Page of text. Plus, on these backgrounds, I want this to be as smooth as possible because I will be putting uh, an image over the top of it. So I don't want to have a lot of... Um, I want to try to minimize the wrinkling as much as possible because if I'm putting this directly on here, any wrinkles are going to come through. And we don't want... I don't want wrinkles, preferably, because like when I put this one on, I don't know if you can tell, there's wrinkles. And um, when you're working with deli sheets and when you're working with the soft of paper, you're going to get wrinkles. It's going to happen, but I want to keep it minimal. Other things you'll need, let's see, your image, your underpants, your canvas, um, some texture paste. This is some gold paint mixed with varnish, and that's for over our underpants. 
and um, some random colors of acrylics. Doesn't matter what colors, use colors that you enjoy. That's always a good thing. I have two different um, containers for Mod Podge. Um, I buy it by the gallon and the squeezy. It's so nice. Because otherwise, sometimes you're just dipping and slicing, dipping, slip, dip, slip. That's annoying. You just put this on, it's brush. Anyway, um, other things that I will likely use, I haven't used yet um, on my original ones because they're not finished yet. Deco foil and some glue dots. These make, here's another color. These make really pretty little shiny dots like these, but then these were very shiny on this grungy background and I had to take them down a bit. Um, again, this is the texture paste with a stencil here and that's how I got that and grunged that up. So this is another example of what this process will bring you. Now, with this process, I started with a flow painting in back. Um, and basically this was with overflow, so it wasn't one of my flow acrylic good paintings. It was just kind of remnant paint that I knew was going to be a background. So, um, yes, this is a deli sheet background. This was a flow background. And then this image that I had created here matched so well with that flow painting that, you know, that's where this canvas was born. I do work on a lot of canvases at once. I've got many in process. Uh, hopefully I'm not jumping around here too much. What am I doing? Other things that you'll need. Distress Oxide. This is a wonderful, great product. Probably one of my favorite toys that I am using at the moment. Um, I like to use, uh, you know, similar colors, colors that I'm going to bring out my background, um, broken china. That's lovely. This <clears throat> wilted violet. So this was the January of 2017 release and I have the July of 2017 release on its way. I buy these on Amazon. These can cost, I've seen them seven dollars each like at Hobby Lobby or Michaels if you go on Amazon you can get 12 you can get a whole set release for fifty dollars and that's a pretty pretty good deal of course if you're going to Hobby Lobby and you want to get them one at a time use your 40 percent off coupon let's see we talked about glue dots we talked about all that you need a brush you need a ruler you need a scissors you need a stabilo these are very, very nice to have. Stabilo um, 8046, you get them by the dozen. Um, it's much cheaper on Amazon instead of just buying one. It's um, $12 for the box versus almost $5 for a single. Get it, get the box. The Stabilo all, it's good. Okay, um, other things that you might need, maybe some gelatos, some, um, a stencil, of course, all sorts of fun stuff. I like to use everything. That's kind of my deal. And if you see something that you like that you don't have, oh, another thing, um, the stress inks. I have many, many colors of Distress Ink. I went into Hobby Lobby a few weeks ago and they had it on clearance and I grabbed every single one that I could. My vintage photo and my walnut stain are both almost completely dead now. But uh, I will be getting the larger ones in those two colors for sure. I love having the variety. Distress Ink is a great thing. And my very cool cigar box that I store them in. Um, other things that you can use for underpants. This was a cool book that I found at a bookstore. Um, you know, underpants does not have to be dictionary pages. 
Underpants can be anything that you want it to be. Just something that's lightweight, that's basically disposable. Not disposable. Uh, what am I trying to say? You don't want something precious as an underpant because it ends up in the end, you don't even see these. <laughs> and you really actually don't even see the deli sheets. A ruler is helpful to, um, take this aside here, wrong. I'm gonna need one more page of this. What am I doing? I'm taking off the white edges. Hmm. Again, nobody's going to see this in the end, truly. Um, I'll just do this one for you real super quick. Other things that do work, if you have a credit card, a gift card, a, um, playing card, we're looking for something to smash it down. I prefer my squeegee. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. I think it was $8. It's actually a very nice tool and one I would highly suggest having in your inventory. It's not a necessity. Absolutely not a necessity, but I have used it more times than what I would have even imagined. Okay, here goes the Mod Podge. I am putting on the very, very base layer. You will never see this layer. Why am I putting it on? Because, well, um, I have some covered canvases here. And like this one, you can see the underpants under it and I love this this will be something I'm not sure what it'll be but as you can see you can see all the writing underneath of here will this end up being the final technique on this canvas absolutely not but this is underpants with a deli sheet now um, I did do a video that was ridiculously long on jelly prints and um, The deli sheets that I'm going to use are a result of that play. And yes, it is play. Now, what the interesting thing is, what people don't realize about art is they get frustrated because they can't do it as well, or you know, it, it, they don't have ideas, or it takes longer time. I am lining up these because they might be seen a little bit and I like things lined up. I am that type of worker. I like things to be lined up. Um, okay. Oh yeah. A, a bit of word about art. Um, it is not a precise process, number one, but number two, it's, I've, I've been doing artwork since I was five years old. I went to a school, um, actually a very good art school. Don't expect that you're going to be able to just come in and do this super easy and super fast. You know, there's a lot of practice that goes into it. And it's like playing basketball, you know. Steph Curry, go Warriors, you know, he still practices and he's one of the best NBA players, you know, of all time. And why does he practice? Because he wants to get better and better and better and better. And the only way that you get better is by doing. So don't let it intimidate you. You got to keep, keep going. Have fun. If you don't like it, you know, don't consider these things precious until it's finished and it's precious, you know? It's, it's a work in progress. You are a work in progress. It is okay. But I guarantee you the next one you do will be better. You know, if you get frustrated, you go, oh, well, maybe, maybe I should go watch that video again. Or tell, um, I'm telling you, I watched Lori Marie Jenkins photo or videos many, many, many times because I'm new to mixed media. I'm a fine artist. I, I, you know, did big paintings. Okay, so this is kind of pulling this up a little bit here. We've got an air bubble. But I watched her processes 
over and over and over. And I highly recommend that you find a couple of different artists on YouTube that you like. And you watch what they do. And it's, it's a free education. Now you may not have all the supplies that they have. Well, you know, if you want to play basketball, you got to have a basketball. Um, do you have to have all the supplies? Of course not. It's very expensive to get all the supplies. But, you know, use your imagination. Somebody's using this here. What else might work in its place? You know, take, take what you can and use it. And, and learn from the rest and keep it, you know, I kept a list I, as I was watching Lori Marie's videos for the first time she was talking about Stabilo, she was talking about a crop a dial and she was talking about all these different tools that I was just like, oh my god, what is that? Oh, god, what is that? <laughs> like, okay, so I started making a list and I really liked what she was making and I wanted to have the capability to do it. Okay, so yeah, I take a little bit of time with my underpants. Even though they're not going to be seen, I tell you what, those wrinkles, whoops, those wrinkles will be seen throughout the process. <laughs> Any wrinkles you have under here will show. That's just what it is. So. I'm taking a little bit longer, and uh, probably taking too long since we're on video. I should probably shorten this out, but um, I'm not going to at this point. I have allergies this morning. I'm not sick. I have a hard time breathing in the morning. I live in California, There's um, everything's blooming. It's kind of a gloomy day out there today. Right now I am um, putting down my edges. And I do like to address the edges because I do not want people to have to have, I do not want to a buy a frame to put on this, okay? So I'm not sure what my price point is going to be on these. I'm going to start selling at shows this summer. And you know, I want to make sure that I'm selling these. And since they're smaller canvases, I'm guessing that the price point is going to be somewhere between $35 and $65. Um, and of course, larger ones being more. But larger ones are a lot harder to make, honestly, with images and making it all cohesive and having a good story. So I've worked up to, I don't know, I would think uh, 11 by 14 still wouldn't be too bad. But anything larger than that, it, it's difficult to have it be cohesive. So it's also something that we don't want to have to take a lot of time at. And we don't want to invest a lot of money in if we're not going to get a large return back. It's just the nature of it. You know, think of yourself, you know, what are you going to get paid per hour? On those first three that I showed you, I'm not getting paid very much per hour on those. But they were the learning process. So this is going to be the... Um, faster version of this so if I can do this under an hour you know you also have to take in consideration the cost of your supplies if I can do it under an hour and I can get $35 for this small canvas I don't mind getting $35 an hour that's a worthwhile investment of my time right and somebody has a unique little piece of art that nobody else will ever have. And I try to make my artwork be something that I would want to buy. That's how I know when it's done. But I see that and go, oh, I like that. I want that. That's when I'm happy with it. And, um, 
you know, my beach goers, they still need a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure what it needs. That's part of why I just decided to start over and show you this whole process on this guy. Oh my God, there's a hole right there. Who cares? It's underpants. It's underpants. It doesn't matter. Golly, I fixed a hole. Okay, 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 okay. There's a hole on there. Oh my goodness. That was easy. All right. Plus we got the air bubble out of there. So we need the air bubbles out. Minimal wrinkleage. Wrinkleage? Is that a word? Okay. Underpants are on. Now, um, underpants generally, the more, you can put more stuff on them. Um, music sheets, all sorts of good stuff. I know with this particular process that I'm doing that these underpants will not be seen very much. This is good enough for my underpants on this one. All right, next, next. Okay, so I wanna show you something here real quick. All right, you see this little bit of gold that's under here. Here's the difference between these two. This painting, this underpants was painted a gold color. And it's a very subtle thing. Can't really even tell even on that guy. Um, this was not painted. So my next stage is I like to take a little bit of gold paint with varnish mixed in. A very um, translucent layer. So this is gold paint, a little titanium white, and varnish. Okay, it makes kind of this thick, goopy stuff. The reason why I'm going to do this is because I don't, generally don't like how white this is. On this piece, I like it, but this is very white underpants. These deli sheets are translucent. So, I want to have a little bit more sunshine coming through. And when I add this gold to this, and you can add any color underneath of this that you would want to. I just like the gold because I want more luminescence. And this seems to be thickening up a little bit more than what I would choose. Um, so. Oh, that was a big gloppity gloop. Loppity goops. Okay. It's okay. We're going to thin it down. We're not going to use water over the top of this because that just doesn't work well. This is a very, oh, I got a lot of paint on here. I'm going to show it to you though. It's not an exact science. It's okay. Work with it. It will be all right. We're going to scrape some of that off. All right. Well, this shows me exactly how many wrinkles I have on this darn page, though. Texture is generally a very good thing. In this particular process that I'm working on, I don't like it quite so much because I am trying to put images straight down on this canvas. So I am addressing the back also. And again, it's not an exact science. It's okay. Oh, you dropped it. It's all right. It's all right. No worries. No worries. Okay. So that you can see it. Oh, it's getting so sticky. And I think actually what I want to do, I, I'm just trying to work out those wrinkles a little bit more still. And uh, I'm going to rinse my brush after that one. 
same brush is used for everything. So another Lori Marie trick is that you don't have to rinse and clean and clean and rinse. Now, oh my gosh, Stephanie, you're taking up all that pretty color. No, not really. I'm trying to get rid of some of the wrinkles. And truly, when you put this wet layer over the top of newsprint, which is essentially what dictionaries are, it's going to cause wrinkles. How are you going to deal with it? Oh, let's see if we can wash them out a little bit more. Well, they're there. They are just going to stay there. Uh, and then... It's okay. It's okay. This is not dry yet. Okay, now this is a layer of varnish in here. Varnish is a water sealer. That is what varnish, uh, or, sorry. Yes, varnish is a sealer against water. So, we've essentially sealed that. Okay, next thing to decide as this briefly dries. Ooh, sticky on the bottom. What deli sheets do I want to use? That one. This one's very see-through. I don't think we want to use that one on this particular background. This one's kind of cool. I think we're going to pass on that one. Ooh, that one's pretty. This one's more translucent. And this one's actually very beautiful. Um, this is layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of paint. I think I'm going to go with this guy. Okay. Um, I should put some more Mod Podge down on here. Just to make sure it's an extra sticky gooey mess. <gasps> it's not dry. So what? This is not a stage where it matters if it's dry. Now, you don't want it a sopping mess. The more that um... So again, I'm trying to get this deli sheet to lay down without texture. It's a very challenging thing. Not gonna lie. Um Texture is generally, like I said, a very good thing. But with these particular images that I'm working with, I don't want a ton of texture. Okay. It's going to be scooted over here a little bit. I'm just measuring with my fingers here. And that's good there. Okay. So. I don't want to stick that back in the water. Okay. It's not liking that heavier. Now, if you want more texture, I can show you how to make more texture. You just crumple this up or you put pieces on here. Um, now, this does have, sorry, just trying to think on what I'm doing here. I'm actually pushing this down fairly softly, and it's working. Happily, it's working. Better than the other times I've tried to do this. So, the underpants layer is completely covered. And why do I put it on there? Well, because it's dead without it. it I, I did my first canvas without putting underpants underneath of it and put the deli sheet on top. And you just don't realize how much it actually brings to the table. Okay, so this is dry on this side. And I'm going to try to push these edges, um, wrap these edges up, just like I did before. Put a lot of stuff on there. Oh, 
oh no, there's paint on here. Doesn't matter. So you're not going to see much of this deli sheet by the time it's done. Okay. So okay if there's a little paint on there. We're going to actually probably put more paint on top of it. We'll see what it looks like. See if we need it once I get to that stage. Okay, so again, I'm just folding these corners. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, this goes down. Um, let's see, oh, well, this one decided it wanted to be done this way. Let's push it in here, just like a Christmas present. There. And fold it up, and it makes a very pretty little corner. Okay. So, yeah, I'm wrapping a canvas with deli sheet. That's essentially what I'm doing. Now, it's not as exciting as if I were to be, oh, sorry. Doing this pieces by pieces by pieces by pieces, which I love that look. Um, I just know that with my end technique, it's not necessary. Pull that down. Oh, that one went happily down that time. So as you can see here, I have that corner made. Make sure to goop it up. And fold it over. Making nice corners. It's important. And we're bringing the deli sheet around to the back. And I will tear this off later after it's dried. But I like that you can see that there's a couple layers on the back already. It's good to show your process somewhat in the back. Oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> I had no idea. No, this piece is worth X amount of dollars. I did take a lot of time to do this for you, and no, I'm not going to take $20 for it. But who knows how the show goes. I don't know, $20 might be just fine. There's that. And that. And then fold over. There we go. All right, get this guy stuck down here at the end. Make sure my corners are good, that they're not gonna come up. Okay. Ta-da! Now, I know that that's very wet underneath of there. Top's dry, though. I don't know if I really want to add additional paint to this. I kind of really love this canvas, this deli sheet is really, really pretty. Um, sorry, reaching over here real quick. This is just a little box I got at the dollar store. I don't want those to stick on there any further. We're gonna do that. Mm, perfect. Okay. Here's where I brought in paint last time. And it depends on how dark this purple is gonna dry, but I think that that is really, sorry, get those out of the way. 
There's a gold iridescence to it, which I love. In fact, if anything, so with this particular one, I put the gold varnish over the top of the deli sheet, and you can see the pattern that it created. It's going to be different from those guys. It will be different, but for these pictures, mm. hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, guys, I'm probably going to have to pause you because I have to sit and think about this for a minute. Um, these guys need to be on a canvas that's a little bit larger, like this one. So that they can sit side by side, and I'll try to find a third image to go with this. Um, yeah. Okay, well, let's just switch canvases. This guy will be used for something else. There is absolutely no doubt. That is beautiful. I need to let this underneath dry, see what happens, see what photos I actually want to use with it. And we're going to move on to using this canvas, which was prepped the exact same way. I have um, sheets. Um, this is the exact same thing that I just did. Ooh. Ooh. Baby, you're a star. Okay. Um, since I don't have much tear room on this, I am going to go through and um, cut this. So, let's cut down the images first. Because we're getting close to the point where we need to put those images on. And I have a guillotine cutter. I did buy this. It was $35 off of Amazon. It is wonderful. It's a tool. And you have to have the right tools to play the game correctly. You know, if you wanted to go out and be a cabinet maker, you have to have a drill. You have to have a saw, you have to have the wood, you have to have the right tools. Okay. And what I want is to make sure that this is square. And that's pretty darn good. I think I want to take off that top little edge though, right there. Do I love that? Oh, God, yes. Now, there's um, a section here where one photo ended and the bottom background is still there. Do I want that to show on this one? It kind of gives it a little extra border, so I'm going to leave it for now. White. White borders. I cannot, I cannot abide a white border. My fingers have so much Mod Podge and varnish and stuff on them already. It makes it very hard to manipulate these. Oh, 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 oh. Push it up tight. And here I will be taking off that bottom edge because it's just too stark. Check my straightness. Yeah, you know, it is much more fun to just tear things out with a ruler, but uh, in this case, I want to make sure everything's squared up. I kind of feel like I need a third image. I like to work in threes. It's just the happiness. Of the beast. So, help me pick out my third image. Do you want to sit here and do this with me? I don't know. 
Um, I'm look through my box of images with me. She's good. Oh, she's beautiful. She would work. I should probably do this for you. Sorry. This one's going to be another. These three. These dancing girls are kind of fun. They're a possibility. Um, this one is awesome. She might be a little too big. Future projects. Oh, they're pretty cool. Oh, she's awesome. I love this image. Okay, so the problem is, is that I have a lot of really fabulous images. And sometimes that's a, that is an, a, a problem. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So you're working through my process with me. Um, which ones do we want? She doesn't quite fit the, the theme. It's, they're pretty adorable. I don't think that they fit the Baby You're a Star theme. This one absolutely does, but it might be too large. So we'll cut that one down. These girls are a blast. And this girl is very cool. These two were originally planned to be on their own canvas. Call up the girls and have some fun. I think those two, I think those guys need to be together because they have, they were on the same background page. Call up the girls, let's have some fun. I like that. That's going to be that one. This one. All right, let's uh, get the cutter again. Cut it down. See what we can do. All right. Ooh. Always dangerous having liquid in the form of your glass of water on the table. I just knocked the table. Hopefully, I didn't knock you guys out of view. And I know I want this fairly skinny because, oh, I just took off her toe. Can I take off any more? Yes, I can take off some more of this girl. And I can take off more of that one. I can make these fit. I'm just now absolutely sure of that. I like her hands there. I like that little bit of repeated. Let's see. a little bit of her hair. What do you think? Good? It's good, yeah? Okay, let's get those images down. And 
on this one. I don't think I want to paint or do anything more with the background. I like the deli sheet the way it is. I like um, the colors that are there. And I will still be manipulating it more. Never fear. Okay, so I need to look at this my way real quick. Yes, of course you can overlap these. Or, oh, there's a W in here. Northwest, west, southwest. Baby, you'll go far. Oh, baby, you'll go far. You're a star. You've got places to go and places to see. Don't like that white line through the middle of there. Here or here. Okay, so this big dark line really um, needs to be down at the bottom. That's what I, that was the first thing I saw when I looked at that. So. It's going to be something like that. I love this diamond um, pattern that came up on this deli sheet. That was one of my stencils. So I'm going to glue her down. All right. So I have to do this basic me. And this is all just going to be eyeballed. Which is always a little scary. Maybe I've got my ruler right here. Oh, I could use a ruler and measure. Jeez. Can you still see? Yeah, you can still see what I'm doing. That's awesome. Okay. Actually, maybe I should do it upside down. Sometimes when you do it upside down, you look less at the photo and more. I do want to make sure I cover up. Well, I can always go back and fix that too. Okay. So... You can go back over with your Mod Podge. And since this is a laser jet print, it is not going to be affected by the liquid. If you had an inkjet, you most likely could not do this. Just saying. Well, maybe you could. I don't know. Lori Marie? I don't know. Inkjet. Um, is not does not work the same way laser jet laser jets what you want I am fortunate enough that I have one at work okay so I added that Mod Podge over the top and then all these wrinkles popped in wrinkles it's texture okay so what you got to do is go with it I need a clean finger. Let's try to get it down. Try to get the Mod Podge out from underneath. And if you have a real issue with these lines, you're not going to be happy using this medium. Deli sheets, the um, newspaper all of it is giving the underneath of this texture so it's gonna have texture is what it is of course I am trying to minimize it because she's so beautiful I don't want
have to try to do the best that I can. Is this being obsessive? It could be being obsessive. Maybe not. Maybe it's worth it to take a little bit of extra time because the wrinkles are very small now. And that's an underneath one. Be careful not to stick your fingers on there when it's sticky like that because it will pull up the photo image very quickly. Let's get the other one slapped down on here. It's so fun to wake up on a Saturday morning and to be able to start playing. I recently, I have a very small studio apartment. I recently sold my, <laughs> all my furniture in order to be able to put up a studio space. It's like, well, I don't ever have anybody over here anyway. And that love seat wasn't getting much use. So, I just now have a work table in my desk. Okay. Make sure she's on there somewhat straight. Now you do have a, a tiny, tiny bit of play time while it's still super soppy wet. I think I have a goober here flooding me. Okay, I'm going to see what happens if I don't put Mod Podge over the top of it right away. Possibly. It will be better. Am I working on minimalizing wrinkles? And if I just set her on top instead of push her in, that might work better. Da, da, da. Learning process, folks. I'm still learning. You're still learning. It's okay. Okay. We're going to leave her just like that. Make sure she's stuck down. But I'm going to wait to see. There's definitely wrinkles. Okay, and the last one, if I want to put words on, I need to be cognizant of the point, or even extra little um, charms or whatever. I need to leave enough space to do that. So, I just need to be aware what's happening so I tried to line her up so that she was even with the image. If you've got one image that's stuck down, you have to um, keep working off of that first image. If it's that first image is on crooked and you don't use something like washi tape or something to straighten it up, and then you decide that this photo needs to be in line with this instead of in line with this, then then it's very noticeable. We don't want people to notice. So put your one photo down, line up everything else around that photo, and you should be okay going forward. Just pushing out those little extra tiny air bubbles. No air bubbles. She's got wrinkles. She's going to be wrinkly. It's the nature of the product that I'm using. If I wouldn't want wrinkles, I would use a smooth media paper and I would put a 
I use my jelly press maybe for that or do paint techniques on that. Okay, my messy hands are coming off <laughs> on my canvas. Okay, so I'm going to give that a couple seconds to dry and I'm going to go... Hmm. Okay, so on the other one I used texture paste. Crinkle texture paste. And I really like the way that that looks. Do I want to use texture paste on this one to add more interest and more specialness? I think that answer is yes. Yes, so resounding yes. Is it necessary? No, absolutely not. Will it look cool? Yes, absolutely will. Does it make a mess? And is it annoying and kind of frustrating? Yeah, yeah a bit. So why would you purposely choose to do something that's annoying and frustrating? <laughs> well, why do we date annoying people? Why do we do stuff that's annoying and frustrating? Because we like to torture ourselves, right? Okay. I am not going to stencil over this right there. I don't think. But aren't these numbers kind of cool? Wouldn't these numbers be kind of cool in here? Yes, they would. You gotta trust me on this. They, oh, look at that. Her foot. Where's her foot? Okay, line that up. I, I'm doing it gonna do it. I'm gonna try to preserve the edge of the photo a little bit though. I hope you can see that. This is gold crackle texture paste. Um, I got it off of Amazon. It was the least expensive. It was probably eight dollars for this large container. It will take me a long time to go through this. Truly. Uh, a cheap palette night from my Michaels. I've got goobers on my hands and I might have to get up and dry my hands, but I wanted to do this all in one process. All in one shot so I don't have to video edit it out. Because I'm not good at that yet. Stirring it up. The first time I use this. See, that's another thing that you learn. First time I used it, I didn't stir it. And when I did not stir it, it was very runny and it did not work well. It's a lot of texture paste on that now. It doesn't need very much here, guys. Why am I doing the texture paste? Because it adds cool detail. We like detail. We're mixed media artists. That's that's what we do. A little extra detail here and there and everywhere. It's okay. It's okay. Let's try it. Oh, I don't want that. Six got very funky. This is okay. I don't mind a little line of texture paste in there. Um, you got to clean off your stencils right away. So I'm going to go um, stick that in water real fast. If you don't, the texture paste sticks to the stencil, and then, then you have a ruined stencil. And since this is a simple stencil, it's very expensive for a very small little stencil. It's just plastic that they've stamped. I mean, really, does it have to cost $8 for stamped plastic? Really? Yes, 
because they need to make their money also. Okay. All right. I have to rinse it off. And now my hands are worse. <laughs> okay. Now well, we're going to come back in. Try to clean up these edges just a little bit. Not happy with this guy here at all. So you know what we can do? Since it's still wet and since it's stencil paste, watch this. Ta-da! In fact, I didn't like how that whole stencil turned out. Except for that nine. That nine's pretty awesome. But we're going to start over. Why? Because we can. You're not stuck, people. Oh, I didn't like how it turned out. Take it off while it's still wet. You have that capability. Didn't hurt anything. Look at that. It's okay. I didn't love how it turned out. I'm not going to keep it. She's very art deco to me, so let's try this guy. I loved the numbers on that last one. This is truly one of my favorite little stencils. Um, all right. And I'm moving it until the border works for me. What am I doing? I'm lining up the edges of these stencils so that I, I do want to maintain a line. I'm still not very good at stenciling. I'm not great at texture paste. I will be the first to admit it. One turned out better. I like it much better. I'm not going to scrape it off. That took two seconds to take off the other stuff that I didn't like and to re put down new stuff. Just fix it. If you don't like what it does, fix it. And yes, I'm being careful about my lines. Sorry if my hands were right in your way there. I'm just pushing the um, texture paste to the edge. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. big goober right there. We know that's going to end up on something. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, where else would I want to use this? Maybe right here. Pretty strip, right? Once 
one, two, three. And this is a mess. I still want to use one more strip of it. I work in threes, if you haven't noticed. Threes or fives, odd numbers. This gold texture paste gets everywhere. All right, and so what I want to do is create an edge here. Although, we're going to do it this way. An imperfect, perfect edge. <laughs> right? Right? I like that there. I like that there. Am I really just going to go go for it and put in all that stencil? It covers up that pretty triangle stuff. I need a spot to have words. So, my guess is probably no. Maybe a light way. I want this on here. I'm creating frames for each picture is kind of what I'm doing. That's how I'm visualizing it. And don't stick your hand in the wet stuff. This takes a bit to dry. Oh, I did it. It's going to cover up all that pretty background deli sheet. Baby, you're a star. It's a great platform for that. Yes. Yes, it does. It does take time to do things well. Now, this takes a long time to dry is the only downfall of using this texture paste. So I'm going to grab out my heat gun and um, I will turn you off while I'm doing that. Just taking a heat gun to it. My industrial strength heat gun. Funny story. I was doing flow painting. They said, get a butane uh, lighter, a uh, butane torch for your flow paintings to bring out the air bubbles. I'm like, oh, this heat gun. This is a $25 heat gun. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> it's like industrial strength. Didn't work. It's too funny. Okay, I think I got that where I want that. I think. And hopefully that's even enough. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. It, um, I'm doing this on canvas. Canvas does not have a um, stay, uh, um, you know, it fluctuates. When it fluctuates, let's see how it created that stuff in the middle. And the reason why I created this funky little pattern in the middle is just because it's trying to do this on a soft. background. Sorry, my words are not coming. Thinking too much about what I'm creating here. Hard to talk and work at the same time. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna wash off my stencil, my paint, my palette brush. Wash off your stuff or texture paste will ruin it. Okay, I will be back to you. It'll just be 